വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ ടുഡേ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് എ കേസ് ഓഫ് എ ഫോർട്ടി ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് മെയിൽ ഹു കെയിം ടു അവർ ഇയർ വിത്ത് ഹിസ്റ്ററി ഓഫ് ഇൻ്റർമീഡിയറ്റ് അബ്ഡോമിനൽ പെയിൻ അസോസിയേറ്റഡ് വോമിറ്റിംഗ് ഫോർ ദ പാസ്റ്റ് ടു മന്ത്സ് ആൻഡ് ഹി വാസ് ഇവാലുവേറ്റ് ഇൻ മൾട്ടി മൾട്ടിപ്പിൾ ഹോ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ ആൻഡ് വാസ് ഫൗണ്ട് ടു ഹാവ് എ സീറം ലെവൽ ഓഫ് ഗ്രേറ്റർ ദാൻ സിക്സ്റ്റി ഫൈവ് ആൻഡ് കെയിം ടു അവർ ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ ഫോർ ഫർദർ മാനേജ്മെൻറ്റ് so uh, on in initial evaluation the patient was conscious and oriented coming to the airway airway was patent and there was no uh, secretions in the breathing part air entry was bilaterally equal and respiratory rate was 20 per minute and saturation was 100% maintained in room air in the circulation bp was uh, 130 over 80 mm hg with pulse rate of 80 per minute and we secured uh, one can- cannula at that time and in the disability gcs was full score with pupil of 2.5 mm bilaterally equally reacting and uh, temperature was an exposure temperature was uh, febrile and uh, grbs was 231 so is a diabetic diabetic patient <coughs> uh, so uh, following we did the adjust to the primary survey in uh, we did the vbg vbg was uh, showing a normal uh, uh, no acid based diso- disorders were uh, noted and uh, electrolytes were also in the normal limits in the vbg sugar in that uh, sample was uh, 240 same of uh, until uh, how much one and uh, sorry nine 231 240 what is the percentage of difference from venous blood sample to uh, capillary blood sample in sugar percentage percentage means how much error 10%, can occur 10% 10 to 15 percent error is uh, acceptable mm. and that also depends on your uh, procedure if you add more uh, like uh, saline or whatever you give for uh, like cleaning the area that also dilutes the blood and if you press too much that breaks the rbc it can increase so the technique is also very important however 15% up or low is permit permitted for this sample so uh, what you should understand is grbc is not a tool to diagnose diabetes it's only a screening test okay and further uh, we did an x-ray chest also was also in normal why limits? x-ray chest was taken what is there in your mind when you are taking x-ray x-ray chest and x-ray abdomen uh, were taken why because of uh, outside history of uh, lead levels um, mm. so uh, in abdomen x-ray we can uh, some sometimes see hepatosplenomegaly hepatosplenomegaly is so, not a feature of uh, lead to- lead toxicity um lead toxicity uh, it is abdominal pain without organomegaly how why should it produces uh, uh, hepatosplenomegaly if there is a bone marrow suppression peripheral production of rbcs uh, by spleen then only spleen will enlarge mm-hmm. there is no anemia in this patient mm-hmm. there is no bone marrow suppression so no that splenomegaly occurs only if there is a destruction or production is reduced rbc then peripheral uh, spleen is a peripheral mechanism to produce uh, uh, mm-hmm. bl- red cells then only it will increase otherwise uh, normally let poisoning uh, you don't see any splenomegaly uh-huh. late cases you may get only you step down to mild fatty liver okay and uh, <coughs> further uh, we send the routine lab investigations and also before that uh, which all condition will produce abdominal pain medical condition can produce abdominal pain uh, pancreatitis medical condition uh, that's a surgical condition diabetic condi- ketoacidosis dk that is a commonest condition then then uh, mm-hmm. mi myocardial infarction which mi is uh, common inferior inferior wall mi then then uh, pleuritis pleuritis let toxicity let toxicity is next mm. then Pleuchromas. acute intermittent porphyria pheochromocytoma mm. sometimes mm. can produce palpitation abdominal pain all these things okay mm. so uh, further uh, coming to the secondary survey he was a non case of type 2 diabetes and was taking a herbal supplements for the same for the past 3 years he, he was having diabetes for the past 5 years and was taking herbal supplements for the past 3 years and the history is that he he was having decreased appetite nausea generalized tiredness followed by uh, uh, like uh, intermittent abdominal pain vomiting that was also multiple multiple episode of uh, vomiting with uh, 
this is multiple episodes of loose tools since the past two months and this was in a progressive nature and he also gives a history of progressive weight loss and blurring of vision and uh, he also gives the history of bilateral lower limb paresthesia mm-hmm. so for the same uh, he went to multiple hospitals and uh, where in which paresthesia is only a broad term what was his complaint paresthesia means what was his complaint uh, tingling, tingling numbness. numbness whether he is able to stand uh, 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 without support whether he is able to stand and close his eyes yeah he was having tingling numbness but uh, he was able to stand without support uh, support and close his eyes yeah close his eyes okay there was no romberg test positive on examination yeah. okay. and uh, initially when do uh, nearby hospitals multiple times evaluated and initially they did a for the same abdo- uh, abdominal pain and all multiple hospital evaluated for the same and uh, later on they did a ogd scopy also okay. and was uh, showing esophageal candidiasis mm. what do you think that esophageal candidiasis is due to uh, has, uh, he was a non case of type 2 diabetes so yeah. diabetes itself can produce esophageal candidiasis and lead poisoning chronic lead poisoning can reduce your immunity because that mainly affects your antibodies antibody production so it is something like an Im- immune uh, reduction status like you give immunomodulators in rheumatoid arthritis sle so this is a heavy metal that can produce same effect of other heavy metals like gold gold was used in rheumatoid arthritis they suppress the antibody production so this also can produce immune suppress- suppression then uh, uh, f- following which uh, for the treatment of the candidiasis was also done later on also he was complaining of the same and uh, from another hospital they did lead levels and which came out to be 65 mm-hmm. with the urine lead levels also uh, elevated normally is uh, normally you normal don't get less than 10 will be less the lead than 10 is a uh, normal mm-hmm. uh, uh, acceptable level okay normally we don't uh, uh, have lead po- lead levels like this and for the same they came to our hospital for further management mm-hmm. so uh, uh, on evaluation uh, the patient uh, there had no history of any allergy and uh, no other uh, comorbidities and uh, on looking itself the patient was uh, uh, emaciated a uh, little um, Less, more, well, not a bot, moderate, uh, less than, like, not a well-built body also. Is it due to like, lead or diabetes? Uh, continuous uh, diabetes and... Diabetes and lead will not produce weight loss. And for the same, uh, we uh, initially sent the routine lab investigations including... How is his walking? That is very important. What is the importance of walking in this patient? Walking. What type of gait he has got? what is expected gait in lead toxicity what happens food drop is a most important problem in lead toxicity like this very high levels what type of gait they have it's only mbbs question slapping slapping is because if drop means it will be like this if you walk it will slap on the ground so that is a common finding while in the icu itself you can see food drop many patients will have food drop which type of patients in icu can develop food drop if you see food drop in icu patient who is staying there for more than 15 20 days what will you suspect patient is on ventilator ha huh? critical illness neuropathy so that is one of the sign of critical illness neuropathy is food drop okay sometimes patient will not be able to tell our patient is not walking so you look at the foot and you can make possible diagnosis of foot drop then ultimately you have to do nerve conduction study here also you have to do nerve conduction study and vibration sense you have to see so slapping type of gait is very important in uh, foot drop lead produces both sensory and motor neuropathy so in, we sent for the routine investigation including the electrolytes rft and mm. uh, also uh, why rft is important what happens to the kidney uh, kidney can uh, get uh, renal failure can occur due to initially nephrotic syndrome can occur proteinuria can occur creatinine can be elevated so uh, protein uh, urine albumin urine protein and creatinine all are important in this patient and uh, these were within uh, normal limits and also we sent for the uh lead levels also and as the history, cbc 
blood See, counts else uh, there was no anemia for the uh, patient and he was having a, a hb of 13.3 mm. and a total counts of 12.8 basophil stippling is the feature of lead mm. toxicity you have to ask for a peripheral blood smear we sent for a peripheral blood smear also <coughs> but there was no any basophil stippling noted okay. and uh, also uh, <coughs> we sent for the uh, serum lead levels and also history as a herbal supplement intake we sent for the uh, heavy metal panel including other me- metals like mm. arsenic mercury cadmium okay and uh, we started as the outside reports were of uh, lead poisoning we started deep penicillin here yes. what are the treatment options for lead poisoning so uh, many uh, are not available mm. what are the options as it is a heavy metal uh, we have to uh, chelate the lead hmm. so chelating agents include succimer then hmm. uh, calcium disodium edta edta is there then we can go for dimer caprol or hmm. uh, depenicillin hmm. and uh, our hospital at the present time we had depenicillin and so we started with depenicillin okay and this uh, all uh, talks us mul- multiple disadvantages and disadvantages and uh, adverse effects are there yeah, okay. so we have to monitor uh, lft rft for the most of the drugs okay what happened to the patient so, so uh, we started with the penicillin and the lead levels came out to be 75 mm-hmm. and the lead level 75 means a very high level of lead toxicity and it's warrant for starting uh, penicillin uh, and the lead chelating agents how do you control his vomiting uh, he is having abdominal pain and vomiting that is most pro- important problem for him the lead level is a problem for us how do you control that this chelating agents will not immediately reduce the problem which so, a chronic uh, deposition it will take some time we can start uh, start with the antihistamines and <clears throat> mm-hmm. then also we can try with uh, immunosuppressants uh, hydrocortisone can be so, re- refractory vomiting you can give steroids initially you give atoclopramide or mm-hmm. uh, ondansetron so, for abdominal pain what you are giving you can give paracetamol paracetamol is not a good choice for abdominal it's a colicky type of pain mm-hmm. So, what do you give? Dicyclamine. Dicyclamine or di- cyclopam. Or mef- uh, Dicyclamine with me- methanamic mm. acid. That all can be given. Paracetamol is only a, a, a type of painkiller, not an aside. Mm. So, that only uh, relieves the muscular pain, not uh, that pain, colicky type of pain. It, it will not have much effect. Okay, it can be added to dicyclamine, sorry, cyclopam. so uh, his pain is uh, having any constipation he, yeah history of constipation was also there okay yeah that is also part of uh, lead toxicity and uh, he was <coughs> having a history of constipation and so initially on reaching a hospital there was no history of any loose tooth but history of constipation was there and uh, okay. we given her a laxative uh, given him la- laxatives and later on his constipation got relieved okay nerve conduction study was done nerve conduction is said to be done. okay what you will get in that that sensory motor neuropathy mm. okay so that's a common finding in lead toxicity and uh, uh, diabetes part how do you man- how you are managing he has got lot of skin lesions diabetic dermopathy mm. so how do you control the diabetes uh, can give uh, insulin uh, how much insulin is required now uh, as is we sent for the hb1c of the patient and was 5.8 okay so it's a controlled uh, blood sugar mm. he is taking any tablet Uh, no he was taking uh, herbal supplements for the same okay so his sugar sugar was controlled but uh, it has produced uh, some other problem mm. so how do you manage the sugar here we can in, uh, right now as a patient is having continuous uh, nausea vomiting sensation we can go with insulin mm. insulin atropid t- uh, as subcutaneous doses mm. for controlling the sugar levels can you give metformin in this patient uh, metformin can cause uh, gastritis gastritis it itself will produce gastritis so unnecessarily will be inducing another problem so insulin will be a better choice okay short acting or long acting which type of insulin will be better for him short acting why uh, he as we don't know whether he will be taking uh, okay, he is not taking, taking adequate food. food so it is safe to give short. only short acting mm. insulin like actrapid actrapid is a regular insulin uh, what is the time duration of uh, regular insulin how much time it will act for 6 hours okay maximum it act for 6 hours so if you the patient go to hypoglycemia immediately you can revert okay but if you give long acting insulin it act for 12 hours so in this type of condition only short acting insulin and small frequent feeds are advisable because small frequent feeds itself patient will develop abdominal pain so it is very small 
frequent meals are advisable for this patient. Small dose of uh, short acting insulin will be advisable. Okay, anything else? The patient is having cre elevated creatinine, any. Uh, no, his uh, RFT was within norm, uh, normal limits and no. Uh, uh, any lead anemia. lines on the gums? And there was no lead lines also. Okay. And uh, as such, for the uh, normally, usually we'll have clinical features like abdominal pain, constipation, anorexia, hmm. then myalgia can be there, generalized tiredness, neuropathy, seizures can be there. Then also anemia as such can be there. But this, uh, here we may this mostly... This patient is not having any yeah, other problem, problem other than abdominal pain abdominal and vomiting. vomiting. The same problem can occur in acute intermittent power Perfect. failure. There also the same type of present patient can have neuropathy, patient can have seizures, patient can have abdominal pain. How do you manage seizures in acute intermittent power failure? Same type of presentation. It can be... Acute intermittent porphyriasis. How do you manage the seizure in acute intermittent porphyriasis? Medicine. Eh? What are the drugs to be avoided? That is very important. Almost all drugs used for seizure should be avoided in seizure in porphyria. We can use uh, diazepam, midazolam, lorazepam. Can add levetiracetam, not phenytoin, phosphenytoin, phenobarbitin, all these things can aggravate seizure in uh, porphyriasis. Okay. Then what will be the urine color in porphyriasis? Acute intermittent porphyria? Red. Red color. Okay. That all things differentiating feature of lead and porphyria. So, if it is lead poisoning with seizure, you can use all the drugs. But if it is due to porphyria, you cannot use phenytoin, phosphenytoin, phenobarbitin, all these things. Anything else you want to add? Huh? Nothing. Okay. Thank you. Okay.